I'm having a hard time doing this review because I'm getting two books mixed up because I'm reading two books at the moment. One is a book book and one is a book on an e-book. And uh, trying to keep the two separated in my mind is not going very well. <laughs> yes, I am confusing the two of them. And I actually cannot keep the storyline separate and they're both good books and I usually don't have this problem but I am so let me see in a golden age where spark reactors power the airwaves and creatures of light and shadow walk openly among us a deadly game of alchemists and warlocks has begun so the man that she is with is a warlock when an unusual cargo drags airship pilot Ellie Chance into the affairs of the mysterious Mr. Marsh, she must confront her destiny and do everything in her power to stop the alchemist from unleashing a magical apocalypse. So Ellie, they have to find out if she is an oracle. I really have to think here because I'm reading the two books and I'm yeah and his warlock powers are not that strong and then he faces a opponent who literally knocks him on his butt and takes a whole lot of his powers away and then Ellie is kidnapped because they want to use her oracle powers they want her to uh, harness them or use her as a conduit to channel her powers for their good and the like the alchemists then there's the night walkers which are like vampires but they're night walkers they're not well they are sort of like vampires ah uh, then yeah her father's kidnapped by the alchemists because they want to machine to harness her powers and uh then there's the little fairy. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like the little fairy. She has her own little dialogue at the beginning of some of the chapters, which is cute. And, or, I don't know. It's not, not that it's cute. It's cute. <sighs> so, the back of the book. Let me go to the back of the book. Historical note. One of the greatest challenges of writing historical fantasy and science fiction is marrying up that which is fact and that which is fiction with a sufficient degree of competency so that the work becomes a coherent whole. And thus I take a moment to apologize to those historians who might read this book and, sense, and feel a sense of outrage. Any liberties taken with historical fact done mindfully and with the intention of creating fiction rather than a work of academic reference. The world of shadow and light is not this world and so there must be differences. Creating a historical fantasy is not a task that can be achieved successfully without the requisite amount of research and for those who are interested in the facts I mention a few. Okay, the Wright brothers. Now they talk about flying machines in this book and her dad creating a flying machine. So she goes into the historical flight in December 1903, but hot air balloons, dir dirigibles, I can't read it, and other flying machine prototypes were in existence for many years before them. Uh, and she goes on about that. Uh... Stanley produced steam cars until the electric starter motor changed the industry. And she goes into a bit about that. The Orient Express is not just one train route, but it was possible to travel from Paris to Istanbul in three days. And yeah, thank you to the British Library for allowing me access to this rare and fragile 19th century newspaper patent and F Ephemera collections. 
yeah, anyways, thank you to the Brooklyn Museum for their wonderful online collection of black and white survey for photographs of Istanbul from 1903. So, anyways, um, it's, I didn't mind it at all. I've seen good and re bad reviews, obviously. Some people loved it, some didn't. It kept me reading. I didn't, you know, it wasn't like enthralling, but I did enjoy it. And actually, I'm on page 332, which is the last page of the actual book. But then they have the epilogue of Paris, November 13th, 1903. Uh, so Marsh and Ellie have, a, well, they have a love story going on, but it's just like a bit of discovering themselves and who they are and, you know, Ellie's power and he's a warlock but he doesn't have a lot of power as a warlock though he's lived like some 200 and some years and then he gets hit by one of the bad guys who really wipes out a lot of his power so he has some problems there and um i don't think he's uh, got his power back and then her dad being the scientist and he gets kidnapped by the bad guys to create their terrible machine this is a note i wrote i want to look up uh the binding by bridget collins i want to look that up in the library it's a book that i saw i either saw it on goodreads or i saw it in my one of my book groups anyways uh the cafe off the boulevard saint michael was never the same after its former owner disappeared Without the Night Walker, yeah, I mentioned the Night Walkers in this book. Uh, something like vampires. But it's kind of more modern age, so they really don't need to go around sucking blood. And they are able to get blood delicacies at just about every, well, every place they go, because the world is used to them. Without the Night Walker to watch over them, the ab absence fairies have been sold off in their bottles one by one. Anyways, that's a whole other story. There is a fairy in this book, a good fairy. And I didn't mind it. I enjoyed it. Like I say, I saw good and bad reviews about this. I haven't read all the reviews. I'll go on Goodreads, see what it says, and add my own little two cents. And it's not a bad book. I was waiting to read this one for quite a while. I actually had signed it out once before, but I always sign out 10,000 books at a time <laughs> and I don't get to read them all. And this was one of the ones that I signed out and didn't get to read. My kitty cat pulled on this and I have to get up on the back of my bed and I need to fix it because he got his claws stuck in it and well, that's what happens when you have kitty cats. So now it's all buggered up, as they say.